Hi everybody, my name is Jonas Mueller and I'm an applied scientist in the Deep Engine team in AWS. And today I'm going to tell you a little bit about an open source tool we developed called AutoGluon. And the real motivation behind this tool is that today's machine learning projects take too long to go from data to deployed model and they're simply too complicated and unreliable to really generate as much value as machine learning should throughout organizations. So AutoGluon is basically a Python library that is standalone on GitHub. You can run it on any hardware or in the cloud, and it enables easy to use and easy to extend automated machine learning across raw data sets spanning domains like tabular data, image data, or text. It allows you to quickly prototype machine learning solutions with just a few lines of Python code. And most importantly, these will be pretty accurate solutions, meaning that they will pretty much match the performance you would expect from an expert who isn't leveraging some very specific tricks that they know based on the domain in which the data was collected. AutoGluon is not only easy to use, meaning any engineer without much machine learning knowledge can leverage it to achieve these high accuracy models, but it's also highly customizable and controllable. For example, a user can specify very basic things like what will be the evaluation metric that your predictions will be judged according to, for example, area under the ROC curve or balanced accuracy, uh, mean absolute error, etc. You can specify how long AutoGluon should run for it, so for example, you can say, I would like my models ready in two minutes or two hours or two days, and you'll come back and you'll just have your models ready for you to use on new data. You can specify how much compute resources should be used uh, for each training job. So AutoGluon will start training many models on your raw data and it, you can tell it to use multiple GPUs or even multiple machines to do this training. And finally, you can also specify things like which kinds of models AutoGluon should even be considering in this fitting process. For example, you can also add your own custom models into the set of models that AutoGluon automatically will train and tune on your data and combine into an overall auto, uh, machine learning pipeline that goes from raw data to highly accurate predictions. And so what AutoGluon internally allows you to do is leverage automatic hyperparameter tuning model selection and ensembling, things like neural architecture search, transfer learning, and data pre-processing. And besides the built-in prediction tasks we have provided for you in AutoGluon that allow you to produce models with just one line of code, you can also improve your own existing modeling pipelines by using AutoGluon to uh, tune all of their hyperparameters without modifying much of your own existing code at all. And so AutoGluon is really easy to use for any of the built-in prediction tasks. Here we provide an example of training a tabular prediction task where we might have a table of values and we want to predict one of the column's values based on the others. Say it's a classification problem and we're trying to predict the column labeled class. And we have our data, say, in a raw CSV file. Maybe it has missing values, you know, it's pretty messy, it has some string fields, some numerical fields, etc. And all we have to do is call task.fit here. We specify that the task of interest is tabular prediction. We call task.fit and it will return a predictor object that we can then use to produce predictions on new data. And the new data can be in raw format as well, such as in another CSV file. And internally, fit will do the following. It'll pre-process the raw data, identifying the type of each feature. It'll even identify what kind of prediction problem this is, whether it's uh, regression or binary multi-class classification problem, and it will automatically select appropriate metrics if you didn't specify which metric AutoGluon should be optimizing for. It'll split the data appropriately uh, into either training or validation sets or more sophisticated k-fold splits that enable it to reduce variance. It'll in individually train various model types that are appropriate for your data set, and it will tune all of their hyperparameters for you. And then finally, it'll assemble a model ensemble of many models that will actually outperform all of the individual models that were trained. And so the built-in prediction tasks that we have provided in AutoGluon, which can each basically allow you to go from raw data to highly accurate models just using one line of Python code, basically a simple fit call, include uh, tabular prediction. So this is classification and regression tasks with tabular data, such as you might find in CSV or Parquet files or in Pandas data frames. 
And really these tables can be quite messy, including missing values, even text or string fields, date times, etc. AutoGluon is really de designed to just run on your raw data as long as it's formatted in a basic format suitable for machine learning here, meaning each row corresponds to one data point that's independent of the other rows, for example. Another prediction task is image classification, so classifying images into discrete categories. And here the raw images can be JPEG, uh, PNG files. The images can be of various sizes. Again, the emphasis is that AutoGluon's fit can really handle your raw data. And even if you don't have a huge label data set, you know, often training modern day convolutional neural networks from scratch requires very large uh, label data sets to get high accuracy. AutoGluon will actually do automatic transfer learning for you and thus can produce pretty high accuracy even if you just have a smaller labeled data set. Similarly, it can handle object detection tasks based on the same sort of data instead of image classification tasks, where here the goal is to actually locate where the object is in addition to classifying its category. And finally, AutoGluon can also handle text prediction tasks. So here, these include classifying or, uh, classifying or doing regression on text fields, for example, sentiment analysis, where you're predicting how positive a particular chunk of text is, might be a regression task. Classification might be, for example, predicting which category a particular question belongs to, as well as many other natural language processing tasks. For example, you can convert almost every task in the glue and super glue NLP benchmarks, these are very popular benchmarks, into a format that AutoGluon's text prediction module can produce models for in just one line of code. And one key feature here is that it can handle raw data sets that have more than one text field. For example, question answering or maybe scoring the similarity between two uh, paragraphs or two sentences. And again, internally, it will leverage automatic transfer learning such that you can get pretty high accuracy even with smaller labeled text data sets. And so first, I just wanna give you a sense of the kind of performance you can achieve with AutoGluon. And here, we're just gonna concentrate on tabular data settings as these are perhaps the most common sorts of machine learning problems most companies face. And so here we ran two benchmarks. One was on this AutoML benchmark that has sort of been proposed by others as a standard benchmark by which AutoML systems should be evaluated. It has 39 data sets and each data set is evaluated over 10 different training and test folds. So this is really a huge benchmark of 390 prediction problems. And then we ourselves curated a Kaggle benchmark uh, where we looked at 11 prediction contests and looked at the data from each of those. And these are really re uh, realistic modern day applications of machine learning because these are all uh, curated from different companies trying to solve real problems. Each data set has a very business motivated evaluation metric that is very uh, appropriate for that particular applied problem and they span a variety of tasks like regression, binary, or multi-class classification. And so here we fit a bunch of the most popular uh, AutoML tools to these data sets. Uh, for example, AutoSKLearn, Teapot, AutoEka, H2O, uh, Google Cloud's AutoML tables, and AutoGluon. And so here, what we show on the y-axis is each uh, label corresponds to one of the Kaggle competitions. There were 11. And then the x-axis is showing the rank that we achieved on the final leaderboard of the competition, meaning how many human data science teams did each AutoML solution outperform. And so being to the left means the uh, system performed better. And we ran all these systems on the exact same hardware with the exact same runtime limits. And so of note here is that AutoGluon on two of these data sets, namely the BNP Paribus competition and AutoGroup competition, actually after just four hours of training on the raw data via a simple fit call, like I mentioned before, outperformed 99% of the human data science team's entries in these competitions. And as you can see, it also clearly outperformed all of these other AutoML systems on the majority of data sets. Here we perform a similar comparison of AutoGluon against the other AutoML tools, this time on the 39 data sets from the AutoML benchmark shown on the y-axis. And here on the x-axis, we're showing the loss achieved on the test data by each system relative to AutoGluon. So we divide the, each system's loss by the loss achieved by AutoGluon's predictions. And so here, systems to the left outperformed AutoGluon on a particular data set, whereas systems to the right of the line at one uh, performed worse than AutoGluon on a particular data set. And it's pretty evident that the majority of systems were worse than AutoGluon 
on the majority of data sets by a significant margin. Next, we also counted in this AutoML benchmark just how many data sets did each system perform better or worse than AutoGluon. That's what's being counted in the wins and loss column here in this table, as well as the champion column, which counts on how many data sets was each system better than all of the other systems combined. And finally, we also looked at the failures column, which counts on how many data sets did each system fail to produce valid predictions for some reason. Either it might have had some sort of error while training on the raw data because maybe it was too messy, or it threw some kind of error during inference, maybe it ran out of memory. All sorts of errors could have happened for various reasons. And what we can see from this table is that on over half the data sets where all systems ran successfully, AutoGluon outperformed all of the other systems combined, which is a really great result. And in head-to-head -head comparisons with any of the other AutoML systems, AutoGluon is much more accurate. Also, AutoGluon did not fail on any of these data sets in the AutoML benchmark, unlike any of the other AutoML systems, which all failed to handle at least a few of these data sets. So there's many existing AutoML frameworks beyond the ones I mentioned. So there's a huge number of open source ones that are really sort of the leading frameworks and the most popular in the current uh, AutoML user community. And then there's recently a bunch of cloud AutoML systems, such as the Google Cloud AutoML's table system we previously described, and one developed by AWS called SageMaker Autopilot. Azure has one called Azure ML, etc. And so one key difference here from between all these systems and AutoGluon is that these other AutoML frameworks, A, really don't consider modern deep learning that much. So most of these systems Maybe they use, you know, scikit-learns neural network implementation or some very basic neural network implementation that really isn't using the modern day best practices in deep learning. And secondly, these systems philosophically aim to find the best model and hyperparameter values. And so what they do is they basically split the data into some training and validation set and run a computationally intensive search for this best model and hyperparameter setting. And that is basically the object they return to you. Instead, AutoGluon relies on uh, strategies that are known to win prediction contests, which include model ensembling via multi-layer stacking. So this is what's shown in the figure on the right, where you have your input, it gets passed into multiple independently trained models, which then output their predictions. And then those predictions are fed into higher layer stacker models that continue uh, producing even better predictions. And so these kinds of model ensembles can be much more accurate than single models. AutoGluon focuses much more on data pre-processing, which is often somewhat of an afterthought in some of these other AutoML frameworks. It emphasizes repeated data splitting to reduce variance in the fitting process through bagging. And as I mentioned before, it uses more modern deep learning techniques. Next, I wanna quickly show you an example of image classification with AutoGluon. So here you might have data that looks of the following format. You might have a bunch of subdirectories each uh, directory will have some name corresponding to a class, and within that directory you'll have a bunch of miscellaneous images that should be labeled as that class. Basically, here we might have clothing items, and the subdirectories correspond to the categories of each clothing item. And this is, again, all the code you need to uh, handle an image classification task. It is very similar to what you needed to handle the uh, tabular prediction task, really the only difference here is that you specify image classification is your task of interest. And again, you just call fit on your uh, data set object that contains these raw images. And then you can use the returned object from fit to produce predictions on your test data. And so how AutoGluon's fit for image and text data works is a little different than for tabular data. So again, it'll automatically under the hood pre-process the raw data and split it into training and validation sets. Then it'll optionally apply appropriate data augmentation strategies, which are critical to boosting performance. Additionally, it'll optionally load an appropriate pre-trained network from either Gluon NLP for text data or Gluon CV from, for image data. And this is basically leveraging transfer learning. So these pre-trained networks have been trained on a massive label data sets and they are already pretty good general purpose models that you can then fine tune on your particular data set. And this process really allows you to achieve high accuracy with much fewer labeled data for your particular prediction problem. 
Subsequently, after loading this uh, pre-trained neural network, it'll adapt the neural network's architecture such that it's appropriate for your prediction task. For example, presumably your classification task, say, involves a different number of classes and different classes than the original pre-trained network was trained for. So the architecture needs to be modified. Then it will start training this neural network on your data, uh, optionally leveraging multiple GPUs if you specify, and it will repeatedly uh, train many neural networks under different hyperparameter configurations to find the best hyperparameters automatically. Uh, and optionally, you can distribute this search over many machines for, accelerated, uh, for accelerating the search. And this is really important for neural networks because they can be pretty slow to train and they, can also, they also have tons of hyperparameters and their performance is quite sensitive to particular hyperparameter settings. And finally, you can again retrain your models on the full training plus validation data set and construct a more accurate model ensemble that outperforms any of the individual neural networks. And so here we applied, we just called fit on the data, the image data sets from four uh, Kaggle image classification competitions. And the final column to look at is the rank, uh, the rank on the leaderboard achieved in each of these prediction competitions. Uh, here we're showing the percent of human data science teams, again, that were beat in each competition. And you can see that the Autogloan's image classification module just trained on the raw data, once again, uh, really performs pretty strongly compared to human data science teams. Moreover, beyond these image, text, and tabular built-in prediction tasks, you can use Autogloan to hyperparameter tune any model you have. So presumably you have some model that has some machine learning pipeline that trains uh, the model on some data and then evaluates its performance on some other data. And you can wrap this all up into one function and then use Autogluon to automatically tune all the arguments of that function with respect to the resulting uh, evaluation metric that you care about on your data. And this uh, allows you to leverage uh, sophisticated hyperparameter tuning strategies like Bayesian optimization and asynchronous variants of hyperband and Bob, which combines sort of both hyperband and Bayesian optimization. And moreover, these uh, hyperparameter tuning jobs can be e easily distributed across multiple machines of your own choosing. And Autoglon also provides features for uh, neural architecture search as well as model distillation that allows you to compress the large but accurate model ensembles into much smaller lightweight models that can be much faster for reducing inference latency as well as requiring far less memory. And our roadmap for the next upcoming months is really to become the most useful open source library for machine learning. And this means we wanna retain our very high accuracy and efficiency, and we wanna become the, we wanna remain very easy to use and we want to basically start expanding the kinds of machine learning problems we can allow you to tackle through this easy to use interface while still achieving very strong performance in all of these problems. And so some upcoming features include uh, the ability to handle multimodal data sets that jointly contain both tabular text and image features all in the same data set, for example, in Amazon's product catalog, uh, specific tricks that might help you if you have unlabeled data available, this could either be your test data, like in Kaggle prediction contest, they always give you the test data, it's just not labeled. Or this could be just unrelated unlabeled data, such as in semi-supervised learning. Moreover, we wanna enhance the trustworthiness of the package through interpretability functionality and uncertainty estimation. And then we're just interested in growing the kinds of tasks AutoGluon can handle, such as adding time series as an ongoing project of ours. And that's all I really have to say about Autogluon. I really recommend you check out our website to start learning Autogluon. And really, it's super easy to use. You can, within five minutes, on your own laptop, have a model trained on your data. You can also use Autogluon through AWS Marketplace or on SageMaker if you want to run it in the cloud. And we're actively trying to grow the open source community. So if you're interested in contributing, uh, just send us an email for a Slack invite or just make a pull request to our GitHub. And for any questions you have, you can either email us at this link or just directly post them on GitHub as an issue if you think other users might have this same question. Thank you for your time.